today for preparing for upper division accounting, uh, semester one of intermediate accounting. Uh, so right over here, my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only, <clears throat> not the authors, employers, or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College, the South Orange County Community College District, or California State University at Fullerton. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. Um, I'm using chapters, when I refer to chapters and what's being covered, I'm using the 18th edition of Intermediate Accounting by Don Kiso, Jerry Weingen, and Terry Warfield. Uh, there's also, some of you may be using a Spiceland textbook, which is the McGraw-Hill. Um, you know, probably the same things applies because it's accounting, but uh, this presentation is copyright 2008 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved and any distribution is strictly prohibited. So got a great question today. Um, and rather than answer on a really long message string, I this is uh, this is a great question, and so I wanted to share it with all of you. Uh, one of my uh, viewers said, "I'm currently studying and reviewing financial managerial accounting. I'm a bit nervous for intermediate accounting coming up in the spring, and cost one any advice I can do to study the right material to be prepared for these two classes." So. Um, I'm going to give you an answer in terms of how I would do this for my class. But again, I teach it. We all teach differently. And that's kind of the joy of teaching is that, you know, we all uh, all have this way. But why are you feeling like this? Well, because of the pandemic, um, and this has been, uh, you're not the first person to say this, but it's a good question that you're asking. Many students feel they coasted through financial and managerial accounting and they didn't feel like they really learned anything. Uh, they got all multiple choice questions. Again, I'm making broad generalizations, but you're not the first person to ask me this. I've seen posts on Becker CPA review, right? Where they have students saying, I don't know what I'm doing. And when you hear that, it's obviously very concerning but it's something that we want to basically make sure that it's, you know, you want to approach this now. So they got all multiple choice questions. And when I say not a problem based approach, the importance of doing problems in your lower division financial accounting and managerial accounting courses cannot be overstated. Um, if you didn't do it, you can send an email to me and I can send you homework packets with videos and links to all the solutions that you can go through and work on your own. Um, and this is really kind of the problem is that when you are going through and learning it, unless you're physically handwriting it out, in my opinion, it's going to be very, very hard to learn accounting. When I, What I'm finding right now is that a lot of employers are asking the employees, well, how to record a sales transaction. And I actually had a student come into my office hours yesterday and I asked her that question and she actually had taken financial accounting. She was in one of my current classes and she didn't know the answer. So, and I had another student who actually got that answer. So she had me for managerial, but the student didn't have me for financial. And she got asked that during an interview with Deloitte and she was immediately embarrassed but what she did was, is she went back and went through the homework packets I had for financial accounting, and she felt better about herself. And by the way, if you decide to go back and use the homework packets, they're absolutely free. I, I just ask that you don't share it with Chegg and Core Zero. Um, my homework packets are there just to really help you just solidify that base knowledge that you need from financial accounting. And even if you say, oh, my God, am I really repeating the course? The answer is, well, if you don't, when you get to intermediate, it's not going to be fun. So let's take a look over here. And this is really the question is like, you're going to pay, right? It's accounting. You're learning a skill. If you wanted an easy life, right, in academics, you would not be choosing accounting in business. You would choose like marketing or some other kind of uh, part of it. Because the amount of time you have to put into this subject is insane because you want to become a CPA and you're going to have to basically learn it and whatever way you're going to do it, 
just go ahead and do it. That's what I can tell you is that you want to put in the time into this because the time that you put in now means less time when you get to the CPA exam. Think about for my viewer right over here, if he was feeling this way, say if he finished intermediate online and it was all going good, got straight A's, got a job, and you get to the CPA exam and it's like, I can't do this. So the real thing is you're going to pay, but it's just a matter of you have to put in the time. And it goes without saying your eye on the prize is you want to become a licensed CPA. And two, when we talk about intermediate and cost accounting, intermediate accounting is really the biggest portion of FAR. And I'm just going to take a quick pause and just show you really quickly. But the better it's going to be coming. So over here. Standards and conceptual framework, that's the first M of intermediate accounting. Income statement of balance sheet, uh, test two of intermediate accounting semester one. Intermediate accounting semester one, this is going to be chapter 17 in Wiley. This is income statement, this, all this stuff, right, in terms of when we're going through and looking at FAR, with the exception of consolidations and those governmental stuff, which you're going to learn for the CPA exam and probably never use again in your accounting career, this is all intermediate accounting. So if you put in the time, and I, I had a dinner with one of my former students a couple of weeks ago, and he had taken me for both semesters of intermediate accounting. And I asked him, I go, well, when you were studying for FAR, and he got an 88 on FAR, when you were studying for FAR, was there anything that I hadn't taught you? And he basically said, no, it was all it was all I had seen it at least once before. And so it was all easier for me to go through and understand. If you're trying to learn this the first time through, I, I know I've, I've met one student who passed inter, who passed FAR without taking intermediate accounting, but that dude was an attorney. So, and that wasn't me. It was one of my students in my ethics class about eight years ago. So all I can tell you is when you're going through and studying for this, the time you put into intermediate accounting and the time you put into it, it will pay off. And also too, like by your, by the fact that you're going through and learning this, when you get on the job, that's going to give you more confidence. You're going to know how basic transactions are recorded. You're going to show your competence as a accounting professional. Right. So we want to make sure we're going through and spending the time because you're either going to pay now or later. Right. It's not a candy that sticks to the roof of your mouth and is a friend of all dentists. But again, it's one of those things where you have to put in the time. It's my dad joke number one for the day. There's probably going to be some more. So when it comes to cost accounting, right, this is really when we're looking at the EC. You're going to see like uh, these parts over here, like economics concepts and, and analysis. This is really micro and macro econ. But a lot of the things over here, when we're looking at cost accounting, there's a couple parts over here. And then there's obviously the performance management. But as we go through and, and look at these different parts, you're really going to kind of go through and see it's like, okay, you know, what is it that you, you know, the cost accounting that you take is going to go through and prepare you for this part over here. So um, so again, you want to make sure that you are uh, putting in that time. I And the more time you put in, the better off you're going to be. So again, the other part of it is you're not going to need to know everything from intermediate accounting because with the CPA exam, it's like mile wide, but it's not as deep. It can't go that deep into a lot of the subjects that you will go through. But again, building your professional competence is something you're going to need to do. Now, before you take intermediate accounting, what I'm going to always refer you back to is a favorite thing that happened to me on my first day of teaching. When I was teaching at Pasadena City College, I hadn't been in teaching for a while. And so I went up and I, you know, before I started lecturing, I got asked by a student saying, do you suck as a professor? And I said, well... Have you seen the movie Gladiator? And believe it or not, she actually had. And so I said, well, if I suck, go like this. Give me a thumbs down. I didn't give him the middle finger. But she laughed. And I said, why are you asking me that question? It's because you're not on Rate My Professors. So make sure you look at Rate My Professors, because if you're taking an instructor 
who doesn't have good reviews. It doesn't mean that they're a bad instructor. It might mean that the students really, you know, all these different things don't like make your own judgments. The best thing to do is to talk to a former student. Go to Beta, Beta Alpha Psi Accounting Society, ask around, what is the instructor like? What was the class like? You know, those are different things you can really kind of learn from. If a student wanted to see how I teach it, guess what? I've got plenty of hours on YouTube of videos so you can fall asleep, right? So again, it's all about like, you know, when you go take a course, who are you taking the class from? Are they going to have a approach where they're going to be looking at a lot of SEC filings like myself? Are they going to be reading PowerPoints from the publisher? Are they a PhD at a four-year school that is required to publish research? You know, in that case, teaching may be secondary to them. Again, it's not going to be in every single case, but it, when you really look at it, you have to talk to other students about the class. It is very hard. If intermediate accounting is taught right, it was harder than any class I ever took in law school. Second semester is even worse. But again, you're when you take this class, this class is really meant to you to basically, we're going to go to that next level, right? And that's really what this is all about. And by the way, for intermediate accounting, thanks to Wiley, uh, they've allowed me to publish solutions to their questions. So if you have a question about a question that I haven't covered, you send me a note, I got the time, uh, I will go through and make the video. So also look up your instructor background. What's their experience, right? Do they have, are they a CPA? That guess what, you can look me up on the Board of Accountancy in California. Not very hard to do. You can look somebody up on LinkedIn. What is there? Do they have a faculty website? What's their background? And why is that so important? Well, if they're not a CPA, they may be really hot on stuff like IFRS, right? Which is basically the Securities and Exchange Commission has said, no, we're not going to do that anymore. So if you get a very theoretical professor, that might be okay, but you're just going to be taught it in a very different way. And I try to be more practical just because I know that you're going to be taking the CPA exam. So when I am going through and choosing topics to cover, it's going to be pretty close to what you're going to see on the exam or in practice. Now, when you take intermediate accounting, it should be either three quarters or two semesters. It is a lot of material, right? What is the textbook being used? I've, I, for me, I was born and raised on Wiley, uh, with Kiso, and it's still the book that I'm using for my classes today. There's also the Spiceland textbook, uh, which is McGraw-Hill. I've heard some positive things about that. No textbook is perfect. There's going to be times where I disagree with it. But again, what type of textbook are they using? How are they using it? Right? Are they requiring students to go out and you know use like Wiley Plus, or if they're going to be using Connect to do all their homework? Right. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I'm going to tell you, though, again, going back to my earlier online comment, if you learned accounting through a learning management system or something that was online, it doesn't sink in the same way that physically writing it out does. So that's really what you have to kind of go through and think about. Also be aware, right? Is there a grade target? For example, is the school where you're teaching at do they have an average for the class? Okay, so at Irvine Valley College, where I'm a full-time professor, I don't have a GPA requirement, right? But if I if I sent people forward who were didn't learn anything, I that's not going to look good on me, right? Because I'm recommending students for jobs. If I send a student to an employer and I say, yeah, the student killed it in my hardest classes, then that's really going to be something where it's like, okay, you know, I know that they know their stuff. And, but again, if, you know, you're taking a class and it's at a competitive school and they tell the instructors that you got to come in with a certain GPA, just keep that in the back of your mind. So um, how will homework be completed? Look at the syllabus in terms of what's being covered. Now, in terms of intermediate, right? what is generally going to be covered in the first semester, which is the focus of this video. So you're generally gonna go through and look at chapters zero through two. They've renumbered the chapters recently. Three, four, five, 17. 
uh, six, seven, and eight, and then nine, 10, 11, and 16. And the reason why we generally tend to cover more chapters in the first semester is that the second semester is awful in terms of the amount of material that's being covered. It's so much because you're introducing income taxes, earnings per share, leases. Um, yeah, just those right there make it scares me. I'm just kidding. Uh, you'll get through it. I got through it. Okay. I taught it, which was even worse. Okay. So let's go through and talk about the first, let's do a real good breakdown here, right? So for your first exam in intermediate, and I've seen it the way I do it is I have four exams. The first one isn't as weighted, but the reason why I do it this way is because I want to know within about two weeks of you starting the class, what is your uh, knowledge of financial accounting? And what happened was when I taught this um, for Cal State Fullerton, the exams on the first test were clearly indicative of the final results. Now, the biggest difference was were the students who actually went through and listened to me and about in terms of how to go through and prepare versus the students that did not listen to me. But the basic thing that you need to know from financial accounting, and again, I have homework packets, which this can, I can, you can do them, help you with a base, help you learn these concepts, is that if you're given raw transactions, can you make an unadjusted trial balance? Right. So I bought equipment for a hundred thousand dollars. I borrowed money. I I sold product, whatever it might be. Then can you make an unadjusted trial balance? Or if you're given an unadjusted trial balance and I tell you the items that need adjustment, can you prepare adjusted journal entry, adjusting journal entries? And can you pre prepare an adjusted trial balance? Once we get to that, then it's saying, once we have the adjusted trial balance, can you do a multi-step income statement? Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit minus SDNA gives me operating income, other income expense, net income minus taxes is net income after tax. So can you do that, right? Preparing a statement of retained earnings, right? Preparing closing entries, right? I don't use income summary. I directly close it out to retained earnings. And lastly, it's preparing a classified balance sheet. Now, the thing is for over here is that if this is something that you need a refresher on, I'm gonna show you the resource that I have for you that you can take a look at and just give me a moment. Um, uh, this over here, this homework packet over here, this is an example. There's video links for every question, right? So over here, Here's a question, right? But this is only dealing with the balance sheet. But the reason why I do this is that, again, if you're uncomfortable with how to record transactions, you need to go through and to do this, right? So over here, the basically the T accounts. And then as we go through and work through these homework packets, you're going to get better, right? It's practice and repetition, right? The more you write this stuff out, the easier it's going to be. Right. So if you're feeling not confident in what you learn in financial or managerial accounting and you message me with the email address that I have at the end, I will send you over my homework packets. I have no problem doing that because, again, my goal is for you to be successful because we need more CPAs. We're not producing enough. OK, so this is an example of the homework packet. You have to do problems doing the things online, in my opinion, just isn't the same. So the more you do it, the better off you're going to be. But let's take a look over here in terms of, so this is the, so the, for the second exam, for chapter three, this again, preparing a multi-step income statement, but there are going to be new concepts, right? With all with intermediate accounting, we're taking what we learn in financial and we're expanding. So we're going to learn about discontinued operations, basic earnings per share. You may have had that covered in lower division financial. I don't do it, but again, how do you restate beginning retain earnings with if you have an error from a prior period? Next one is how items are classified on the balance sheet and the statement of cash flows, right? Can you prepare a statement of cash flows? If I give you a comparative balance sheet with additional information, can you prepare a statement of cash flows? If the answer is no, Again, the best thing you can do is admit when you do not know something. 
if I don't know how to do it, I can learn it, right? That's what you want to go through and do. The way I teach cash flows is with T accounts. And I can tell you that most of my students who learn it this way, they have great success. Uh, over here, uh, present value. Um, how do you handle discounts or basically when you have zero interest bearing notes, either receivable or payable, how do we discount them? And you're going to need to be able to use present value tables. So what I would say is if you know how to handle a bond issuance using present value tables where the interest is being paid you know, semi-annually, if you know how to use the effective interest method, that's going to make it a lot easier. Chapter 17 is revenue recognition. This is going to be all brand new, but when you get tested on it, it's going to have heavy present value. Now, again, some schools go zero through uh, 11 or 12, and then they're going to do 11 through uh, 12 through 23 or 24. So I put it up at front because to me, there's so much stuff at the back of intermediate two that this makes more sense to be it for the intermediate one. Okay, chapters six, seven, and eight. This is generally going to be my exam three. Can you prepare a, a basic bank reconciliation? Do you know how to handle because chapter six is cash and receivables? Can you do journal entries to write off receivables, record AR that was subsequently collected, and determine bad debt expense? The new parts of this chapter are really going to be like factoring, and you're going to have some of the ch uh, chapter five present value concepts on notes receivable. Chapter seven deals a lot with inventory costing, FIFO, LIFO, weighted average periodic and perpetual. Now, this again is something where I cover it heavily in financial accounting. I get those students that when they come into intermediate, they haven't done it before. So they have to go back and review because I go through that part very quickly because I focus on things like dollar value LIFO. So Next one over here is inventory at the lower of cost or market, and that's going to be in chapter eight. Um, and that's really, I should say this, you want to be familiar with the lower of cost or market, but then there's also the, when we're dealing with intermediate accounting, we're dealing with the three middle values in terms of determining market, which I believe is replacement, net realizable value, and then net realizable value minus a normal profit margin. Don't hold me to that, but that's really where that comes in. There's also the retail and cost method of, of estimating uh, inventory or retail cost. Okay, so over here, now we get to the last part of here for semester one. Uh, how do you handle basic disposals of property, plant, and equipment? We're going to be dealing a lot with non-cash transactions. So for this chapter, if equipment is sold, can you do the journal entry, right? That's what you need to know heading into this. Chapter 10, heading into intermediate accounting. Do you know double declining balance, straight line uh, units of production? If someone says some of the year's digits, ask, the, ask your professor which publicly traded company uses some of the year's digits. When I spoke with a representative from the Securities and Exchange Commission a few years ago, I asked him, I said, hey, dude, does anybody ever use SOYD? Some of the years did it. He's paused and said, well, I saw it like five times out of 10,000 and no one ever really called it that. So that just kind of tells you how that, how infrequent that is. Next one over here is how Goodwill works and is recorded, right? So do you know how to record Goodwill? Do you know what that is? Do you know how to amortize intangibles, a basic understanding? Chapter 16, which is investments, right? So this is generally going to be new because in lower division of financial accounting, again, we just don't have the time because you're taking that one semester of lower division financial and you're making it become a full year of intermediate accounting. Remember the cost from cost from managerial accounting generally become upper division cost accounting. So that's kind of like the overview. So again, so to prepare for intermediate, if you're feeling, if you're not feeling groovy, right? What you want to go through and do is, again, if you send me a note, uh, I'll give you my email address at the very end of this. If you want me to send you the homework packets, that is a great way to learn accounting. Because you've already had some exposure, it's going to make it seem as though it's like a little bit of like a review. But again, that's going to be the best way to go through and to learn the accounting. So um, with that all being said, 
Um, I think I screwed this up. Yeah, I did. I duplicated a slide. But anyways, so anyways, but thank you. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at 1812cpa at gmail.com. Uh, soon to come is part two of this video where I will go over the second semester of intermediate accounting and what you should be doing to go through and to prepare for it and best ways to go through and to study for it. So uh, feel free to email me if you'd like a study guide or that happy to send them to you uh, with just a caveat. You're not putting them up on Course Hero or on Chegg. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.